Welcome to the D Post Sports Chat. I'm Drew Rubenstein. I'm with Ed Owens and Ed, another week and it's quarterbacks again is the question for the West Virginia Mountaineers. We're still a few days away from WV playing at Baylor, but at this point, what's your guess on who will start at QB? Clint Trinkett practiced Tuesday. Uh, Dana said that whoever was going to be playing in Saturday's game was going to need to practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. From what Shannon Dawson said, Clint's gotten better every game. He's got an undisclosed shoulder, upper arm injury. No one really wants to define what it is, but he suffered in the fourth quarter. Missed one play against uh, Oklahoma State and then came back and finished the game. So I think that was a good sign. The fact that he practiced Tuesday I think is a positive sign. If he keeps progressing like that, I think he will be your starter on Saturday. Is, are there worries if he's a little bit dinged up and you're looking at a, a Baylor defense that hasn't been tested, but they, they do fly to the ball. They have had quite a few sacks and tackles for loss and uh, may put some pressure on him. Yeah, I think there's a lot of worries. Uh, Trickett is the third quarterback that WVU's tried out this year. They started with Paul Millard. After two games, scrapped him in favor of Ford Childress. He had two games, then he tore a, a pectoral muscle, and now he's out. Uh, they have officially ruled Childress out. Uh, Dawson said that Childress can't even throw a ball right now, so there's no chance you'll see him. But if Trickett can't go, that means they're going back to Millard, who they've passed over twice at this point, and, and there's got to be a reason for it. On top of that, like you said, they're going to be going up against a Baylor defense that's allowing about seven points a game, and while they haven't faced any real stiff competition, there's something to be said for them keeping people off the scoreboard. Last one with the QBs. Do you wonder after what Trickett did to lead West Virginia past number 11 Oklahoma State, where he had been the first four games, or the broken head sets and the, the, the miscommunications uh, enough of a sign to show why he hadn't been playing. Yeah, I, you hit it right there. The, the communication was always the reason that they said. It wasn't uh, a physical thing that was keeping Clint off the field. It was really the, the knowledge, the communication, being able to get the plays from the sidelines, get them called to everybody else. You saw a lot of problems with that last week, and, and Dana did vent his frustration more than once. So I think that was the reason it was keeping him out. It's also, I think, even more than the injury, that's their major concern heading into Baylor this week, that they can kind of clean that up and really efficiently run this offense. So right now we're five games into the season. West Virginia's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with William & Mary, blown out by Maryland, played close at Oklahoma, and then comes back and, and beats the number 11 team in the country. Saturday will be the official halfway mark of the season, but what do we really know about this West Virginia team? Yeah, I don't think we know too much at all. I think they've played uh, a variety of different teams. They've, they've played some great games. They've played some terrible games. They haven't really found an identity yet. Three quarterbacks in five games hasn't allowed the offense to really gel at this point. It's something they're really hoping for. And defensively, I don't know that they've been tested in the way that they're going to be against Baylor this week, a team that's averaging 70 points a game, again, albeit against some weaker competition, but Baylor can score. I think they are definitely the most uh, effective offense WVU will probably see all season long. So the defense can hang this week. I think we're going to learn a, a lot more than we have up to this point this season. Is it tough for WVU to prepare for Baylor because at this point they've played one game in something like 27 days and the three games they've had, they really didn't have to play their starters in the second half. So what do we really know about about Baylor and, and does that favor West Virginia or the Bears, the, the uncertainty of, of Baylor at this point? Uh, I think the layoff definitely favors WVU. No one wants to say it, but timing. Uh, Art Browse offense relies on timing a lot, like Dana's relies on timing. If you remember last year, one of the things coming out of the bye weeks, the big questions was always, how are they going to respond? How is the timing going to be? For playing one game in 27 days, that is a lot of time off. And like you said, the starters for Baylor have only played about six quarters of football so far this season. So I think that's going to hurt them. Uh, as far as not really knowing what to expect from Baylor. One thing Dana did mention was that they don't change. It's kind of a lot like WVU's offense. They do what they do. They're not going to throw too many curveballs your way. So they can look at last year's game film. They can look at what Baylor's already done this season and pretty much know what to expect this week. So that said, the 70-63 to 63 shootout, there probably won't be a repeat of that. But g give us one, one key to Saturday's game. If, if West Virginia is going to have a chance to pull off the upset, what are they going to have to do here? Uh, I think it starts with West Virginia's defense. Uh, I think the offense will will be challenged. I think the defense will really be challenged. They're going up against an offense they haven't faced at all this season. They're going to have to stop the vertical game. It's something Baylor does really well, and it's something that none of WVU's opponents at this point in the season have done at all. They're going to test the secondary. They're going to test the safeties in the corner and the cornerbacks. They're really going to have to be sharp in this game, and, and I think that'll be the toughest test for them. All right. Thanks a lot, Ed, and please continue to check thedpost.com. We'll have a blog up and running for the Baylor game, and Ed and I will be uh, back for pre- and post-game chats. Thanks for tuning in today.